So three, two, one, go. There you go. I finally brought around then. <laughs> Cheers, <Shut up>, <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Gone Feral. <laughs> so, as usual, we have two films to share with you. Yep, and in our first film, we follow Harry on a photography mission. And this time, he's left the UK. Welcome to Finland. <laughs> this is so cringy. Welcome indeed to one of the most beautiful countries between Russia and Sweden. I'm in the northeast of Finland, where it's most wild. About 75% of the human population lives down in the south, so up here is excellent for wildlife. This is my first time here in October, and I'm here after one species in particular. So I've come here to the Finnish-Russian border. Many parts of the border are fenced, but not here, making it the perfect brown bear highway. Yep, I'm after brown bears. They look like this, a bear that's brown. As I mentioned previously, I've never visited at this time of year, but my aim is to capture unique autumnal images. I don't know what to expect, but I'm so excited. So I've just arrived and I found out that someone who's staying here has put out a trail camera about a week ago. So what I'm doing now is going to retrieve the footage to see what the camera's captured. It might give us an indication of what's moving in the area. After some smaller triggers, the first large mammal was a familiar species, a red fox. It looks a bit nervous, probably because Finland also has these, wolverines. They are a bit like badgers that we have in the UK, except bigger and fiercer. They're the largest mustelid in the world and would happily prey on foxes. And then we had some triggers that could possibly, maybe, just maybe, be a bear. Cool. This is probably bear territory then. It's now the first week in October, which means the bears are starving in the lead up to hibernation. Now, a small amount of food is left out in the form of meat to supplement the bear's diet, but they will get the majority of their food in the form of berries, which cover the woodland floor where I'm stood. They'll also eat leaves, insects, small rodents and things like that, and can take on a staggering 20,000 calories a day. That's even more than me. Anyway, bears in Finland are absolutely terrified of people due to a history of hunting. So, to give myself the best chance of getting nice photos, I'm using purpose-built hides. So, I just made it to my hide for the evening, and I'm right on the edge of the lake. Now, the autumn colours and everything are looking amazing. And, uh, yeah, I've only got about 15 hours to go in this uh, small shed. Annoyingly, the cloud cover meant that as the sun set, the light disappeared rapidly, but it didn't stop the bears putting on a good show. European brown bears are widespread across Europe, with the largest population just across the border in Russia. In the blue hues of the late evening, they move astonishingly quietly, considering they weigh anywhere between one to 400 kilograms. That's even more than me. They're the gentle giants of the boreal forest. So the weather looks atrocious, but I've just had a really, really nice surprise. A large male bear came out of the forest and walked all the way around the lake towards me. And I managed to get some low angle portraits of the bear with the rain falling all around it.
finally. was looking good for the next few days, giving me the chance to watch some of the other gorgeous creatures here. Like these greater spotted woodpeckers that I spotted pecking wood greatly. I know we get them in the UK, but it's nice hearing them peck with Finnish accents. Corvids hang around the area too, like hooded crows, Eurasian jays, and these rarer Siberian jays. They feed on scraps that the bears leave behind and pick up grubs unearthed by the bears rummaging. And songbirds act as little musical pom-poms, like this great tit, these crossbills, and this iconic little chap, the crested tit. I was also reacquainted with one of our trail cam superstars from earlier, the fox. managed to get this photo of her. I'm thrilled. This is exactly what I wanted in terms of capturing autumnal themed wildlife. Now I just need some similar luck with the bears. Bit of a last minute change of plan today. So earlier on the wind whipped up and I was meant to be in a hide out in the open on the swamp. So decided to change it up and now I'm in the forest hoping that the bears will prefer the sheltered conditions. Fingers crossed. I couldn't have asked for a better setting. The autumn light was spectacular, pouring life into the amber tones of the boreal forest. And once again, the bears were out in all their splendor. European brown bears can live for up to 30 years. This time of year is the last chance to see them out and about, as later in October they begin entering their winter dens and won't re-emerge until the spring. They mainly rely on their excellent sense of smell for finding food, a bit like me. And as mentioned earlier, they aren't fussy. Bears much prefer finding food rather than hunting it. This lets them conserve energy, which is important as they pile on the calories to sustain them through hibernation. It really is such a privilege to watch and photograph these furry behemoths. We just got some lovely, lovely evening light. One of the larger male bears with a scar on his face. He just strolled out and he was out there for a good couple of minutes just smelling the air and looking for food. And I got some of my favorite images from the trip. And it's the last night, I know it's very cliche, but it's uh, tied it off all together really nicely. Look at this old boy. The warm orange environment and trees losing their leaves makes this image feel so autumnal. And then there's this, my favorite image from the trip. Look at how big this fella is with weight piled on to last him through hibernation and his big fat face peeping above a sea of gold. Oh man, <laughs> I'm really gonna miss this place. My time in Finland was over for now, so I had to head home. What an amazing place though, and what fantastic animals. It's wonderful how peaceful wildlife photography can be when Ed's not around. I've spent a lot of time in Finland over the last few years and mm. autumn is a magical time of the year to visit. I'll definitely be going back next year. Yeah, maybe I'll come too, because I quite fancy seeing some bears. They look amazing. All right, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, our next film is a good old challenge, which was delivered to us as a message in a bottle, which Harry found on a beach in Norfolk.
I packed my things and headed off to meet Harry. I was excited to see what our new challenge was, and when I arrived, the atmosphere was electric. Right. Mm. Our challenge is to see who can get the best photo with a Chub Marine. Sail. With a Chub Marine in it. And it'll be determined by a public vote who the winner is. And the catch? Well, we can only use our phone. First, though, we need to find some seals. Now, last year, we found some off the coast of Devon. But this time, we're in Harry's home turf, Norfolk. Norfolk is about 300 miles away from Devon, on the east coast, and is a stronghold for our British seals. In Devon, the sea was beautifully calm and clear, so we could quite confidently swim with the seals. Here, though, the water is far less inviting, so we're going to stick to dry land. Yep, we're looking for seals that are hauled out on the beach. So we set off scanning the beach as we went. And then, after trekking literally dozens of metres, Harry spotted something. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, those are definitely seals. Obviously those are seals. Why are you using your binoculars? Yep, we'd tracked down, or stumbled upon, the colony. In the UK, we have two resident species of seal. The harbour seal, with their more dog-like faces, and grey seals, with their Roman noses. Here on the Norfolk coast, there are both species. We're here during spring, when the grey seals haul themselves out onto the beaches in great numbers for their annual molt, where they progressively shed their old coat and replace it with a new, healthy, undamaged one. During the molt, the seals have to increase the blood flow under their skin to feed it with the nutrients it needs to grow new, healthy fur. In the cold water, the seals would have to expend far more energy to be able to do this and maintain their body heat, as blood loses heat much faster in the water than in air. So instead, the seals spend the vast majority of their time hauled out on the beach, mainly relying on their energy reserves for the duration of the molt. Now we'd found the seals, it was time to start our challenge. To decide who goes first in this challenge, we'll toss a coin. Loser goes first. Right, heads I win, tails you lose. Tails. To keep the challenge fair, we decided we'd both have to use the same phone. Right, so here's the phone to take photos. I'll time and make sure you don't go over one hour. And the seals are over there. So three, two, one, go. Come on, see you. OK, so with this rather strange looking phone of Ed's, we've got three different options here to choose from. I've got a wider angle lens, a mid-range zoom as well, and a telephoto. Let's hope I get a good result. It is so difficult to isolate a seal with so little zoom. I mean, even on the, the largest magnification here, the seals just look like slugs on a beach. I don't, I don't know how to isolate these, these little fellas. But after a short while, I spotted an opportunity. There's a big, big bull seal just laying on the end. It's quite confident, so it's isolated from the rest of the colony. I'm just going to try and get a shot of that. I'm just going to approach it from here, and I'm not going to get too close. Oh, this is so good. Look at the composition. Oh, yes. Look at that. <laughs> I just love the way that you've got the, the sea defences coming in from the left. You've got a gull sitting on the top of the post. Oh, God, yes. I decided to spend a while with this seal, seeing as it might be the only one to offer me an isolated composition. Oh, God. Oh, you're falling back asleep. No. No. <laughs> the only thing I am being slightly worried about is this big, I love seal poo because it absolutely stinks. All I can smell is seal poo. Whenever you're around seals, there are some things you must do to ensure that you don't disturb them, especially when they are on land. 
trying to get some rest. Now, the first thing to do is if you have a dog, please put it on a lead. I don't care how old or friendly it is, just put it on a lead. And the second thing to do is to make sure you never get closer than 10 meters to the seals. So for those of you who can't visualize what 10 meters is, it's from about here to about here. And the final thing is to make sure you never get yourself between a mother seal and her pup. Because not only will this distress both animals, but it could cause the mother to abandon the pup. And we don't want that. In spring, there aren't any pups to worry about. And this time I'd left my dog at home. So as long as I kept my distance, all I'd have to worry about was getting a decent photo. Okay, so I'm trying my hardest to get some um, yeah, nice compositions down here, but it's proven difficult. So I'm gonna head up higher onto the dunes to try and get a better perspective. <laughs> This feels hopeless. This is more of an environmental shot with the colony. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. After heading back down, I was greeted by a strange man with bad news. Expose a little bit and boom, 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 boom. Harry, come on. Harry, we've got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes? 20 minutes left. Oh, yeah. God, okay. <laughs> So Ed has just told me that I've got 20 minutes left. It's not much time. I need a different perspective really, really badly. I need to get higher up. The dunes are too far away. I'm gonna need something like a stick and I'm gonna tape his phone to the stick. So I'm gonna go look for one, okay? This looks into, oh, wow. It'll be long enough to sink. I've just been over the other side of the dunes and I just can't find a stick. Why are there no sticks on the beach? While there weren't any sticks about, there was a camera operator. Literally cannot find a stick. Ed's like way off over there. Can I borrow your tripod for a sec? Right, nice one. So this is, this is my makeshift stick. Um, I'm gonna extend this. You got any tape? Tape, okay. Um, oh, sweet. <laughs> right, so what I'm gonna do is tape. I'm gonna tape the phone to this. Shoddy as hell. Oh. Okay. Zoom in slightly. And I'm going to put this onto self timer. My plan was to use the self timer mode on the phone to get a unique high up perspective of the seal colony. Do you think this is going to work? <laughs> I have no idea. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, what does that look like? Okay. I'm going to try that again. Oh, please work. <laughs> please. This has to work. Oh, my God, that looks awesome. Oh, it's like a drone perspective. Okay, awesome. All right, stop. Harry, stop, 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 what? stop. Stop. Time is up. Oh, You're done. God's sake, man. One hour done. <laughs> what have you done? It's time to try, bud. Well, you know, I was trying to get the kids <laughs> Once I'd rescued my high-flying phone from my low-brow colleague, it was time for my go. Here's the phone with the camera. Thank you. You know where the seals are. You've got one hour. Go. Right. OK. Harry finished up over there, so he was probably doing that bull on the end. I'm going to go this way. Right. Right, I think Harry had the better light because it's starting to rain now. But I'm going to try and use it to my advantage. See, the seals aren't very dynamic. They're, they're kind of just like pillows that have been strewn about. But the storm up there, that is full of dynamism. And we've got nice light rays coming through in some areas too. So I've got the wide angle so I can get a lot of that dynamic sky and with all the light and things. There's, like no, there's no foreground element. So it's just quite a big blank bit of beach and then some seals and then some sky. So this area here is just far too boring. Um, what can we use? What can we use? I'm going to try these rocks actually. If I can get a rock in the foreground, and this will work. Now we're getting a bit closer to the seals, so we won't go too close to them. We'll keep a good distance. Right. I mean, the seals are really small in the frame, but <laughs> it might work. I've got a nice fat rock up close. There we go. Once I had a shot or two in the bag, it was time to bring out my secret weapon. Now, I haven't told Harry this, and haven't got them out yet, but I've actually brought I actually brought my binoculars. So when I said we've only got three options of wide, middle, and a bit zoomed in, we might actually have a fourth option of really zoomed in. If I can line it up, 
Oh, it's gone. All right, there we go. Look at that. Because it's so hard to get this lined up right, I'm just going to get any seal that comes into frame. That'll have to do. Yes. Oh, look at this. Oh, there's two. Perfect. Right. Oh, no. No, no. Right, that'll do. We're off to a good start, I think. Off to a very good start. Even though I'd clearly already won this challenge, I just kept on having brilliant ideas. Actually, I've had an idea now. When I was saying before, there's no foreground interest, so I tried to use the rocks. They didn't really work. But what I could do is I could make my own foreground interest, then have that, then the seals, then the sea, and then the sky. And that should be quite a nice composition. Yes. Aha. I thought with seaweed is just a bit of tree. It'll do, it'll do. We'll take some big rocks. Right, these'll do. Does that look rubbish? Put that a bit further. Oh, I've put my knee in it. <laughs> okay, so there's the, there's the rocks. Do the wide angle thing again. That's a bit better. You can't really see the seals though. No, this is rubbish. Oh, man. Um, weirdly, my pebble and branch photo idea wasn't working. So I moved on to something a bit more macabre. Aha. Uh -huh. I think I've got something. This could be the winner. Oh, wow. Ugh. Actually, it's quite grim. I could see it was a dead seal, but I didn't think it would be decomposed this much. Ugh. Does this count as a seal, even though it's dead? This is some brilliant foreground interest. So again, if I do a wide angle, like that. And you've got the dead seal pointing towards the sea. You could probably find some artistic meaning in this, but I can't. If I go directly above it, like, the, oh wait, my feet are in it. If I go directly above it like that, then it looks really artistic because you've got, you've got the consistent texture of all the pebbles and that texture is broken up by the, uh, by the carcass. And it's not the most delightful image. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm pleased with that. We've got one that's quite good. Let's see if we can get another. I'm just warning you, mate, you've got 10 minutes left. Right, okay. Okay, 10 minutes. One more good shot. What's going to win? What will people like? Oh. Let's go up the dunes. Let's go up. Come on. Oh. <laughs> uh, it might look good if we had some sun, but we don't. That's rubbish. That's really rubbish. I think I might be done. What do I do for 10 minutes? With just a few minutes left on the clock, I wasted no time at all and gave up. <laughs> Harry, I'm finished. I've run out of ideas. You think it went all right? Well, I'm pretty sure I won, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. You don't need a whole hour, though. I don't know how you were faffing about till the end. All right, well down done. to the public vote, then. Let's see who wins. The public voted wrongly, though, for some reason. Yeah, Ed, I wonder why they didn't like your photo of a dead seal. Wait, okay, for me. <laughs> You've fallen over again. <laughs> Mate, I think we can agree that neither <laughs> of us won that challenge. Our photos turned out. Terrible. They were terrible. At the time, though, we thought they were brilliant. We were we both did. so confident with what we'd managed to get. But no, looking back, definitely not our finest bits of work. <laughs> Cheers. I think we both lost that. <laughs> well done, <laughs> Next time, Ed makes a friend. <laughs> and Harry meets technology. See you then. <laughs>